Hey everyone, Ashley here, Scraps, Buttons, and Bows, and we are going to say, welcome to our Sunday, uh, Sunday o'clock, <laughs> jeez, Sunday one o'clock class, uh, that is a Pacific class for those that are watching recording and would like to join us live. Um, so we're going to do, we've been doing tons of chip dories, and we're going to be doing a junk journal today, but I'm going to cut some of these apart really quick. These are just tags that are going to go in this journal. They don't necessarily go with the paper line. And I had planned on having this stuff done, but I just didn't. I was super tired this morning. I think it's the weather. I'm getting whiplash from Mother Nature's weather. I gotta tell ya. So Anna had fun at prom last night. Um, her and her friends. So her date, her date's family is very wealthy. They have like four or five different cabins. So they went out um, to one of the family cabins and hung around a campfire and stayed up till like five in the morning. It was just, uh, there was probably like just a handful of them. And she said she had like the best time of her life. <laughs> so gave for her, super happy for her. But I wasn't expecting that, and so it was. I was kind of um, taken aback when they showed up this morning at like 11:30. <laughs> so, I was like, "Oh, okay." Hey, Carrie. So I'm just gonna get some. This is gonna be a very um, building the pages and stuff, which I'll round these later and ink them later. I just want to, I should just get them. Let me hold on. Let me hold on. So I'm going to cut all of these apart and include them in with this. So just sheets of the Prima that I've just kept with tags and stuff on them. So these are going to be for this junk journal. So let's just set that aside. She had a ton of fun. So, okay, so I have these kind of divided, kind of, I should say, into the standard stuff that goes into my junk journals. Um, the stuff that you see here is pretty standard for even the kits that are in shop. So um, I'll show you how I build each signature. These ones are going to get inked, not heavily. So I think I'm going to use um, This is for someone. She doesn't like dark, so I'm trying. She wants vintage, but not dark. I'm trying to think if I should just use frayed burlap. Or vintage photo. We'll use frayed burlap. Okay. So she wanted more lined paper, so I've included more lined paper in each little. Instead of two, I did four of the lines. And these are all coffee stained and dyed. I do them in bulk. Some of them are baked, some of them are not, but they've got a nice crisp to them if they're baked. They got a, a crunchy feel. Composition notebook paper. So there will be three signatures, and there's 11 actual paper pages, but then there's other things that go into it. Other, so this one's a really crispy one. Hey, Heather. Welcome to everyone coming in. We will have to cut down the edges um, to about five and three quarters. I think is what I want to do it at. 
So those are the four lines. There's also two graph pages that go in this. Signature. So three signatures, and each signature will have the same quantity. Some old school like arithmetic paper. This is actually vintage. I actually look for vintage papers. And this doesn't need to get cut down. I'm sorry if I'm talking semi loud. I'm listening to music in my ears. I have my headset on. So these uh, these book pages. So when I got a book, I reuse the paper either in the book or I'll use it to pulp to make my handmade paper, which I have to include some of that as well. So hold on one second. Let me grab it. Okay, so here's one of them. I love this because you can see like the book pieces. Aside from the handmade paper, what you see, the handmade paper is not included in the junk journal kits, but aside from the handmade paper, everything else is typically in there. I just love this. I love the uneven edges there. So I'm going to put those three. Here's a white one. This one was made out of white pulp. Pure white pulp. Um, like this one here is pinkish. I don't think my camera's going to pick that up, but it's pinkish and that's because I had some like one little itty bitty piece of, of pink cardstock in here or it was red and it turned it semi pink so which is fine with me um i pulp it uh, that's that's a whole nother class i need to set it up to where i can teach that class there's I made my own, um, oh my gosh, now I forgot the names of everything, um, mold and decal, and I made my own mold and decal and all that stuff, so, but I have a big bin that I save all of my, like, when I make, when I make the chip dories and I cut off the notebooks and stuff, or even when I got a book, all the extra it doesn't take a lot of paper, so I mean, I could be pulping for forever. But I've got this big bin full of, there's even colored papers in here. I mean, it's just, but there's like the book pages down there all torn up. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it and, and making a mold and decal of your own and putting on the screen and stuff and all of that. I just, I'll have to set up in the kitchen to do it because that's where I need to be to do it. And all of the, so the, it's called a, a cooch pad, it, the paper, cooch paper. It's spelled couch, like you spell it the how you would spell out the word couch, but it's called cooch. And this coach paper absorbs the water out of this paper. And you can use them over and over and over, but they are relatively expensive. I bought them in bulk. Though so if you buy it in bulk, it's a lot cheaper. And, but you can use them, ouch, over and over and over. So here's one of one side of the handmade mold and decal. And then the screen. You'd pull the, I would pour, I would set two of these. Hold on. So 
So this one without the screen that matches like this. Okay, you can hold it. There, you can. This is my made version. You can buy a version for like 30 bucks. And you would pulp some paper and water in your blender. Make sure it's a blender that you're willing to give up. You cannot use it for food after that. It's not safe. Pour all your pulp in there. Drain the water out. Remove the top and then you'll have a square here of pulp paper that you'll then flip over and lay on one of the cooch papers and it absorbs the water and you use sponges and there's a whole there's a whole step to it so essentially that's what it is but this is my own I made that well actually no Markel I came with all the supplies and Markel used all the those power tools to do it <laughs> So, anyways, let's go ahead and I'm going to pull out a couple sheets of this handmade stuff. So there's like different thicknesses. Some of these are really super thick. Like this one's not. This folds quite nicely. But these are pretty thick. So I'm going to use those ones anyways because I like the words in them. The random bits of words. So, why do you want to let me pick that up? Okay, so this one's probably at the perfect height and width to be folded in half. These are going to get folded in half and sewn in. So that would be cool in a junk journal to have. So I'm going to have one of these in each signature. It's just, just a different element. Let's see how high this is. How tall? How high? Ten. I'm just going to And I'll fold it in half. So, but we'll make these. So this will be a class. Ooh, what's next week? Maybe we can do it next week. That'll go in that signature. How tall is this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, this should all be ten because my mold and decal is ten by twelve. Yeah, we're going to do some homemade paper. Hopefully, maybe next weekend we can do it. Maybe I'll just have it set up in there. There. Perfect. I think it's pretty. Um, I have them on my Etsy, but basically it's all the paper... All of the, like, this kind of paper, the doilies, the envelopes, the the postcards, the everything that you're going to see used in this journal will come in it, except for the homemade paper. The homemade paper does not come in it. These vintage um, knitting things that I got, all kinds of stuff. But I'm just trying to get each signature ready. Because these are the parts that actually get sewn into it. These two will get sewn into it. And then, so these, what I was saying with these is I take these book pages and I fold over about an inch at the edge and it gets sewn in. So it creates a what I call phalange. Yes, I'm recording. I'll record the homemade paper too. Um, and I have other recorded junk journals as well. Well, maybe not, now that I think about it. So I just fold them over, and they end up being phalanges in the book. Um, yes, I can post the Etsy. 
Oh, I'm going to fall out of my chair. <laughs> but it comes with, um, the kits come with seam binding, and some laces. There are pictures on my Etsy. You can see everything. There's ephemera, and some things are exact. They aren't exactly, but it, it does include. Let me allow links. Oh, Linda beat me to it. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. I'm not the fastest typer in the world. Um, I'm just trying to think of everything. It, it includes a lot. There's a lot of stuff in there. The seam bindings. There's um, like stuff like this. I also send little bits and bobs of ephemera bits and pieces and there'll be tags and all kinds of stuff. What you're seeing on the desk is so I can get the thing built <laughs> so I can embellish it. Okay. We need the plain paper for this one. Where's it at? Oh, here it is. And then there's also the plain paper which is just the printer paper that I always use on everything that's coffee stained. So basically when you get this kit you get everything you need to make your own junk journal. This coffee staining is done for you. Everything is done for you and you can just pick through and put in whatever kind of order that you want to put in. So and it and like I said with the, the with the laces, the seam binding, and the ephemera bits and the postcards, it's all random. It's not it's not going to I don't have the same exact bits that go in every single kit. They are similar to everything. Those are just a basis. Now the paper, however, all of the paper aside from the homemade goes in every one. And like these are old school. I found these at a vintage market. I got a whole box of them. They, you know, they all have like a slight yellow to them. It's great. I love it. I could use a coffee. And then we, we need to ink all of the edges. I'm not going to, we might border punch a few edges, maybe this middle one edges, I don't know. I either like to border punch all edges or none. I've really been on the kick of ripping the edges. So let me show you guys what we're working with here. I only have one junk journal left, all the rest are sold. This is the one that's in my shop. Um, So you can use the seam binding to create your own tie closure or ribbons for the tags, whatever you want to do with it. So in this one, which is the first time I've ever done this, I ripped every single edge and gave it that really torn, weathered look, and then they got super distressed. I'm really into that. We're not doing that with this one, although I want to, but we're not. This is a this is a custom order, so I have to go with what they want. But like, see, here's those book pages I'm telling you about. I use it. I sew them in to use them as phalanges to attach other things, like this postcard. Um, here's one of the envelopes to create pockets. Again, another phalange with a postcard on it. That's what I call them: is phalange. So this is the three signatures. You can see it from the top and it's quite chunky and, and beautiful. So this is essentially what we're going to be making. This one is a different size though. I think this one is 
This is the eight and a half tall by five and a quarter wide. The one I'm doing, um, the one I'm doing today is six wide. Maybe, maybe I should cut it down to, because half of 11 is five, five and a half. Maybe we'll cut it down just a little bit. But I have to accommodate for the fact that these get stacked within each other. So where's my chipboard? Maybe I'll cut this and make it five and three quarters wide instead of six. I'm going to make it five and three quarters wide. <laughs> I love it when I second guess myself. So it's the same height, it's just a little bit wider. So that's what we're doing today. Well, it, you guys probably won't get to see the finished. I'll record it, but you won't be able to see it finished. Because Andrew's going to come on and we just won't be done in time. These take, this will take me the rest of the day to do. Bye, Orla. Have fun with your friend. Okay. So let's see here. This one. Do some phalanges. Um, what do you mean with craft text? Like on the spine? Or... I'm not sure what you mean with craft text. I haven't made one with craft text on the spine. Is that what I hope that's what you're asking? Otherwise, I'm confused, which is not unusual. But I was going to sit here this morning and do all of this, and I was like, well, if I do that, then what am I teaching? How to put it together? <laughs> So in the paper, some of them will have these marks. It's just from when they hung dry, and it's okay. It's not a big deal. I can't help it. For the cover, no, I have not. I have not, anyways. I just wanted to be clear on what you were asking. No, I haven't used craft text. You mean like me painting it? or putting paper on it, I have not done that. Mm -mm. I personally, when I do junk journals, I like the vintage look. I don't like, to me, it would be hard for me to make the craft text look, look well, I mean, I don't know. I'd have to try it first, but I like using the chipboard and paper. No, I've only used craft text. I've only used it in a painted version for the dories. I for covers for the chip or the paint dories or craft text dories, whatever you want to call them. I don't even know what we should name them. The only thing I've ever covered in craft text is the faux because they feel really nice once they're sealed. Is the craft text painted with a design for this is a journal. Yeah, I could stain it and make it vintage. It would feel like leather. I mean, it's not a bad idea at all. I'll just have to give it a try. Maybe just like on the spine even.
But I, when I do the junk journals, I'm very into the vintage look. So that's how I prefer them to be. There's many videos up on my YouTube channel of finished junk journals that we've done. these all folded and then we'll start back with the cutting them to the proper size and the inking. Do I do anything other than paint and seal to pur up the craft text story? I put um, gesso down I have my piece of white craft text and then I cover both sides in gesso and then I paint them and then I seal them. I did do it without gesso and I just like the finished feel with the gesso on there. It feels thicker, it feels like I, it took a ton of paint when I didn't gesso. So I gesso first. And I used, so the one that I didn't gesso on, I used the Delusions paints. The little pods. It's the one I did with the green and purple and then the heart. Oh yeah, no, they're great. She had a ton of fun. She had a great prom. She looked beautiful. She said that they weren't at prom for very long, but because Walker doesn't dance, and um, just they went up to um, Walker's family cabin, uh, her and a bunch of their friends, and they got to camp and spend the night. They're the responsible kids of the school. <laughs> they stayed there and they had fun. She came home at like 11, 11.30 this morning, and she smelled like a campfire. <laughs> So, but she's been hoping for this day forever that she could go and camp and have just fun. So, she did. They had tons of fun. That's okay. I wonder if this is too. Yeah, this one's going to be not sewn in. I'm going to have to grab a different one. Because these are composition notebooks that I got because I like the lines. I like having the lines and I don't want to have to print the lines because that's expensive either way, whether you get it professionally or not. So it's composition paper. And then I just pull it out of a notebook. I unstitch everything. So it does have its holes from being sewn into the notebook. Um, so I'm going to have to grab two different pieces of paper. Because these ones were too close. So I need to find ones that are like this. You couldn't tear this apart if you wanted to. So, But I will use this in the notebook for little journal spots. How about that? Let me grab two more lined pieces of paper. From my bulk stash of paper, when I copy dye paper, I do it in a bulk fashion. <laughs> I I used to have two of the the drying racks. I now have three, so I can really just crank out couple thousand pieces of paper that's been baked and hung. Some of them are baked. You can kind of see the marks from the baking. They get all crispy. And some of them are just hung dry, like this paper here. And you'll get the hang marks, but that's okay. It's a junk journal. So 
So let me fold up its plain pieces of paper and then we'll get going on putting the signatures together and inking them. She likes the vintage look, but she doesn't want it to look dark. So when I ink it, I need to ink it to just kind of stain it, not really. Just you can use a vintage photo or frayed burlap, which I need to cover this. Bye. Have a good dinner. But I'm doing this and I'm totally itching to do more chip tories. <laughs> Oh man. So let's cut apart some music note paper. Let's see how tall this is to begin with. It's almost 12, so I'll put it at 6 for height. And it opens so it's folded. And we'll put it at 5.5 for width. Wait. Mmm. -hmm. Yeah, five and a half. Well, we'll do five and a quarter. And then these can go in for little spots to put a photo on or something. So one for that signature, one for that signature. Let's do for this signature. Okay. Also, I like to use this paper as well. Um, let's do 10. 10 seems about right. By Eight and a half. Hmm. So I'm going to have to cut down a lot of this paper because the journal is eight and a half tall. I have to make it eight and eight. Unless I make it all the way to the top. Where's that other journal? No, oh, I'm going to make it at eight and a half. It'll just go all the way to the top and bottom. I love that. This one can be, it doesn't matter as long as it's not above the sizes that I want. I'll save this stuff. Put in other drunk journals. Let's do eight. this main sewn pages. Well, that's not true. I want to put in, I'm going to cut this. These are two Prima papers from Prima Ledger. I want to put those in. So, 
we'll do a seven tall, which will leave another five. And nine and a half wide. I'm going to put this on a ten. So these things can get sewn in there as well. Let's do a four and a half. Let's do one more of those pages. I'd like to do three sewn into each one. This is going to be a chunky monkey, though. Maybe not. I guess I've got that other paper in there, too. Okay. Let me just fold these in half. That one can go there. Yeah. This one. I don't want to put too much of this heavy cardstock in because it's heavy for one. It makes the when you stack papers on top of each other and you stack, 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 they they do move outwards. So you're gonna have this progression of it. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here in a second. So let me find whoa. We're going to spray these doilies. These are going on phalanges. These are going on phalanges. These are also going to go on phalanges. Journal spots. And let me see here. One, two, three, four, five. One more. These are policy envelopes. They're six by nine. They get folded in half and sewn in. And then I'll open up this side so then both sides will become pockets. This one will just close. And so let me open up this side. That one can go there. Let's do one for this one because this one has the two card stock, so this will have a card stock and an envelope sewn in. Oh, also, I see I keep forgetting that I have more and more stuff to put on these things. Let me find them. Hold said phone. We need a couple of these envelopes to go on phalanges as well. These are vintage uh, airmail ones that I found at a thrift store in their yellowing and everything. They, the glue had stuck at some point on some of them so we'll put that one in there and So I'll 
fold this in half. And then we need to open up this end. You need to open it before you sew it into a signature right away. I can go in that one. These are all extra bits and bobs. Let's set aside. Okay. So let's see how fat this little monkey is going to be. I like to put them together. I'm going to be stamping a few inspirational quotes too as well. That was requested. So Let me find those said stamps. That's a good one. That's a good one. Good one. Good one. I'm just going to be stamping them throughout the books. These are all my junk journal stamps that I typically like to use because, like I said, I do vintage. 99.99%. I don't think I've even done a non-vintage one. So that might be 100%. use that one. I love these birds on a wire. I'm putting those in the book because I absolutely adore them. They crack me up. Oh no, that's not the one I was looking for. This one. Okay. I know I have more. I just don't really dig for them. I just do want to. But I probably will. These are other stamps I use for junk journals. I'm so horrible with them. Just kind of throw them in here. Fearlessly authentic. Oh, love that one. Adventures are the best way to learn and be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. How awesome. these sheets the graphic 45 stickers come on or sticker stamps come on they're extremely cheap and flimsy I mean they're done by Hampton Art so I guess I can't blame Graf graphic 45 all the way but pretty close let's see here the best way to predict the future is to create it 
creativity is and intelligence having fun. Oh, those have to go in there. Okay. Let's do those. Oh, where's my garbage can? I'm all throwing stuff on the floor and my garbage can's not even there. So I'm gonna, we're gonna build the outside of this as soon as I find all the stamps that I need. And then we're gonna start um, let's put that one in there. I'll leave that one out. Let's see here. Sheila, wait, what did that say? She left beauty wherever she went. What the world needs is a group hug. <laughs> Amen to that stamp friend. <laughs> what the world needs is a group hug. Big old group hug. I would say a really long couple group hug sessions, maybe. Okay, so we'll use that one, and then this one, and then those should be enough quote stamps to just be, I don't want to repeat any of them, I just want them scattered throughout the junk journal. Okay. Oh, did someone push Carrie out of bed? Oh, Carol did. Way to go, Carol. Hey, at least it was Carol and not Teresa. Teresa can, can get violent with her pushes. Especially if they're motivated by something. <laughs> okay. So, what I'm going to do is just start layering these. This is one signature right here, this whole pile of paper, and that's what I'm gonna do is do the one signature. And then we're going to be stamping and inking and um, putting the book, the outside of the book together minus the spine. So, let's see here. Let's start off with and I'm going to border punch these ones. I'm going to border punch the cardstock ones. Just to make them pretty. Er. Just to make them prettier. Um. I'm straight up missing my favorite. Pun oh, there it is. So we'll start with this one and oh wait, I need to cut these down first before we can put them in to five and a half wide. Eight and a half tall.
I need to write something down really fast. Just really quick. So I was telling you guys the other day about how Connor's tire just mysteriously fell off when they were driving down the road at 40 after just fixing that tire and having it like done right and put on correctly and all of that stuff. And they're like, it has to be somebody that just came and loosened our tire. And I'm like, well, for one, who does that? That's like the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. But there's been this maroon jeep cherokee and i've seen her twice today it's a white chick in there with her dark hair driving she looks in her 20s and um she slows in front of our house goes really slow and she's looking at the house both times and then she f goes down the street pulls in someone's driveway does a u-turn and then drives back by really fast so I'm not sure what that's all about, but I'm going to get to the bottom of that. Tell you what. <laughs> I will not be having crazy happening at our house. Crazy is not happening. So, I'm just going to take this, these junk journal pieces, and then just start sandwiching and layering them and stacking them inside each other. Just bit by bit. Just kind of rotating what I'm putting in. You want to save one solid one for the middle because I know it sounds terrifying, right? Um, well, I'm not terrified. You want to save one of the solid pieces for the middle because that's what creates the pocket to cover the sewing signature. And I'm actually going to put this right here. I've got to cut this down too. I gotta tear it down. Try. Let's put this like this. Like that. And like this. What is my plan for that? The tire, the story of the tire tear. Okay, so he had um, a tire. They had his, it was bald, and so he, they took the tire off of his back, well, his spare tire, which is the same size, really nice tire, and um, they took it to Les Schwab to have it all checked out and aired up and, and everything, and it was good to go. They brought it back here, and there was like five of us out there taking off his old tire and putting on the new one, and they tightened down all the bolts. They even, like, firmed it down with the compressor thingy, and... Um, they did all, so that tire with all of its lug nuts and not coming off, that was not coming off at all. And that's the tire when he was driving to the lake doing 40 that rolled off of his car, just rolled off. There was nothing, nothing broke or fell off. Everything was still intact. The tow driver, he's like that someone straight took all of your lug nuts off, which the scary part about that is, is they had to go across the long bridge to get on the road that they were on. And the long bridge is a mile long road that crosses Lake Ponderé. And if you wreck on that, you're taking out, it's only two lane, one in each direction. You're taking out an entire bunch of people. And the speed limit is like 55 going across that bridge. It is so scary. Like people in their stupidity and their, I just, I just appalled, right? Okay. So, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I am not, not down with any of that. So, that stuff's going to stop right now. You don't get to mess with people's kids and their lives. 
I don't, Connor and Savannah are baffled. They're like, I don't even know. I, they don't have enemies. They're like the friendliest, like everybody loves them kind of people. They, they have no idea what's going on. Savannah does have a stalker though, so that could very well be it. So I guess they kind of do. Yeah, I'll get it the next time I see her. Uh, the first time I just thought maybe she was looking for a house, but it is straight up the same woman, the same car, slowing by looking at my house. I thought for sure maybe she was just lost the first time. You know, benefit of the doubt type thing, but this is twice in one day I have straight up caught her. And then she just drives just a couple driveways down, flips a Yui, and then comes back by. So. I gotta put this other notebook in here somewhere. This one. Yeah, well, I mean, I probably wouldn't think anything of it had the car thing not happened, to be completely honest. Okay, so when you stack in like this and you stack on top of each other multiple papers, it then becomes a lot, like your your width changes. You can see that there's a progression to the outside. So one, I'm going to make sure I sew these really, really tight. But that's what I'm saying. When you do your book, you've got to accommodate for the fact that it's going to be probably a quarter inch an eighth to a quarter of an inch wider than you were anticipating. But that's okay. I like that fact. And then with all of these layered on top of each other. Oh wait, this one. This one goes in the middle. Because this one gets folded to create a pocket. Like so. I'm actually going to fold it right now. Just so I have it. So they'll be, this will be adhered, so it'll be one page, but this will make a pocket right here. And you can do that to any of your pages. Depends on how many pockets you want in it. I just do it to the middle because it covers the sewing. So that's how I layer the signatures on top of each other. So we have two more to do, and then we've still got to ink and stamp them. So this is a long process. You guys are not going to see it all in this video today. Um, Hopefully I'll be able to finish with the process at some point in another junk journal. But I'm gonna have to call Savannah and Connor. Okay. So I'm going to cut these to five and a half wide by eight and a half tall. And I'm cutting them to the height of the actual book. Like with the other one. Let me show you. With this one, it practically goes all the way to the top. You can see there, and I like that look. So this one's going to go all the way to the top. If I can get her license plate number, I will. But, I, I mean, aside from seeing her drive by and knowing that she's going to flip a Yui, that'll be my only real course of action is to run out there during her Yui flip and... So let's put this one together. It's the same thing, you're just stacking them inside of each other. So these junk journal kits have a whole bunch of different papers and textures, you know.
and chase her with my cookie sheet and hammer. Okay, so for those that don't know what Carol is talking about, we had a moose in our yard that stayed for hours and hours on end, but I got tired of being there because he was sleeping right next to my car, and I couldn't get in and drive to the store or go pretty much anywhere. So, for 15 minutes, I sat there and took a cookie sheet and banged on it with a hammer, relentlessly, drove him crazy. I was wearing kind of earplugs, so I was all right. And off he went <laughs> to the next house. He went down the driveway and he's like, fine, lady. God, so rude. That's what he was thinking. I know. I, you can you could have seen it on his face. He was like, what is wrong with this lady? She's nuts. There was a moose on the loose, that is for sure. That's great. Man, I had stuff to do and places to go. Plus, if something happened to Mark and I had to get out of my driveway to take him wherever he needed to go, I was not going to... Could you just imagine me? I have a little Dodge Caliber climbing over from the passenger seat to the driver's seat trying to get in because the moose is on the other side of the car. Wait. I was in my my PJs and my slippers. I didn't have no curlers in my hair. I probably look like a bat crap crazy person out there running around. But hey, if the police aren't going to do anything about it, which, you know, whatever. So they give me the name for animal control, for animal control for my district to come out and, or at least call him. Maybe he's got some tips. I call him and he goes straight to voicemail and it says, hi, my name is such and such. I will not be, this isn't the end of March. He goes, I will not be answering my phone or returning voice messages as I'm on vacation till April 6th. And I'm thinking, <laughs> There's nobody feeling in for you? I mean, like, what's going on? Like, hello? I might bump the height of this album up to eight and three quarters instead of eight and a half. Okay, so there's two of them. We got one more to do for our signature.
Oh, I gotta cut these papers down. No, that moose is not staying till April 6th. It was like March something. There's no way. Oh, the strawberries. Oh. So that bush that he demolished, Mark's like, oh, there goes Tokyo when the moose was eating his prized strawberries and his flowers and the garden that he's maintained and tended to and loved. But this is not a shock to Mark. We get moose every spring, but they don't stay. They come in, eat a few tulips, and they bounce. They're like, peace, thanks for the sustenance, right? <sighs> This one was like, oh, I love this yard. It's so hot out. I'm going to just lay here in this sunny patch for just a little bit after I ate all of your strawberries in, in, in your bushes. He was eating one of the bushes and scratching up and breaking all the vines on the trees and the blossom trees that haven't even blossomed yet. Okay. But Mark's, so we're sitting, we pulled in from going to Costco and we have a car full of groceries. They've already been in the car for 45 minutes because Costco is an hour away. And, um, so we're sitting in the car, we pull in, and we're like, oh, there's this, just this moose in front of our garage door, which by comparison looks gigantic. This moose is like covering the entire garage door, okay? And uh, so we're like, oh, man, what do we do? So we just sat there for like 10 minutes, and then he started making his way to Mark's strawberries. This is He finally left the bush that he was rubbing on. And he's making his way to Mark's strawberries. And you can just hear him. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like I'm video recording this. And he's like, oh, no, there goes Tokyo. <laughs> he was so upset. So long story short, his strawberry bush that was demolished by, we have a whole bunch of them. It was just like one or two. But it did regrow its leaves already. It's refurbished itself. It's going to be fine. No one has to worry about Mark's strawberries. And so some of these people have actually seen this news because I did video record it. Of course I did. I'm actually have installed. It's what I do. I put my entire life on Facebook. But luckily it's on lockdown, so only a certain select few get to see it. So... <laughs> Okay, yeah, those three journal pages. Bye, Jeannie. Hi, Josie. So here is all three of the signatures. This is the junk journal. It's going to be a big body. You could actually probably break this up into six signatures depending on how you're sewing it. I don't like doing that because I hate sewing. So I'm just going to do the three signatures, tie it tight, and color good. That's how I do all of them. And they seem to work out quite just fine. So now I'm just going to be inking and stamping, but first let's go ahead and we'll build at least partially the outside. We can't put the spine on simply because, and we can't really wrap it because I have to sew into the spine. I could faux sew into 
another spining fluid on, but that's just, that's not safe. But I'm going to actually change the dimensions to 8 and 3 quarters tall. Same width and everything, but 8 and 3 quarters tall. Hold on one second. Alright, so these are eight and three quarters of an inch tall, which works for me. I'll use those other ones on something else. So my front paper, I decided to be this floral pattern, but now I'm having second thoughts to be completely honest. One second. I'm trying to decide if I want to go completely mad and change the whole thing or She likes vintage and she likes chic. But she also liked princesses and fairy tales. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I could go a lot of directions with that. So let's see here. I think I'm liking these for the outside of it instead of the flowers. Even though it kind of is relatively dull, I don't want it to be, I want it to be pretty neutral. So I think I'm going to use those for the outside, use that one for the front, and then this one for the back. And then I want to use one of these ledger pieces for the spine. Maybe not. Oh, 
let me see here. I hate it when I second guess myself. That's why I, s I always do it with custom orders too. Because if it's in my shop, I make it and I put it in my shop and someone buys it, they liked it initially to buy it, right? So I don't have to please them on that end. But when I have to do customs, it's like seriously, I have to be in someone's head. <sighs> Maybe I will stick with the flowers. I don't know. I'm going to do the flowers. I guess if she doesn't like it, I'll just make it right. Okay. So let's do our width. It's, a, it's already at five and three quarters, so six and a quarter. This could be the spine, I suppose. And then nine and three quarters. I don't even know if she likes pink. That's why I'm hesitant, is because I don't know if she likes pink. She didn't say, hey, pink, but I mean, if she likes princesses and Barbie, I'm pretty sure she likes pink. <laughs> I looked for a Barbie printable, bowl, but I couldn't find one. Alright. So we'll go with these for the front. Oh, I oh, I know. It's like I love doing them. It's just I never want to let anybody down ever. It's just not me. Uh, so that's where I get with sometimes it gets it makes me really nervous. So I'm just going to tape the outside of this with tape to set my perimeter, just like I do with all of my mini albums. That's something that you will find in common with everything I build with this making a book, like with chipboard and stuff. But I mean, if they, I, I also have to console myself with the fact that if they liked your shop enough to pick you to make their custom order, there's something about your style that they like. So I guess if you just do things how you normally would do them, maybe with a few of their requests thrown in, then you really shouldn't be super worried about it. I guess is how I have to tell myself, right? <sighs> I'm always so nervous. So don't want to jack it up, <laughs> as they say. This order was just about last week too, so just been so stumped on the junk journal front. I don't know why. But that's it's like I'm just totally going ape wild with the chip dories right now is because I'm stumped everywhere else. I'm stumped with the painting. I'm stumped with the junk journals. And maybe it's primarily because that's what I've been doing for the rest of the last year has <laughs> been the painting and the junk journals. So I'm kind of like refreshing with the chip dories, I suppose, I guess is what you could say. I'm really proud of myself though because I didn't dwell on the paper. I came in this morning and I was like, we're using this paper. And while I have a ton of Marion Smith, which is really vintage, and I have a ton of other stuff, you cannot make those without cracking and she doesn't want that. So I can't. Yeah. yeah, you have to 
Exactly, Carol. Sometimes you have to change direction for a while to get a fresh perspective. And when I'm doing things like this, or I don't watch, I don't watch crafting videos on YouTube. I stopped doing that. Oh, geez, a couple of years ago, primarily because I found myself getting overwhelmed and bogged down with new things to try. That I just didn't let it flow on my own, you know. So I stopped doing that a long time ago. I cannot, cannot, will not. I watch mostly like family videos, like the Michelax and Pretty Shiny Sparkly and like Beauty Guru ones, which is ironic because I don't even have. So far, but it will. There will come a day. And I don't want that to happen. <laughs> so. All right. We're going to set the side this the spine aside because we are going to be poking holes into it and sewing into it. Which I shouldn't have put this tape on there now that I think about it. Don't put any tape on the spine. So the tape goes on after you sew it. I'm going to peel a layer of off the spine, which will be fine. It's just a layer of the cardstock, chipboard, whatever it is. All right. So this is the back page. I'm going to remove this tape and the tape of the chipboard and place it within the combines. There's the back. So these we can wrap, we'll wrap them and then we can put the paper spine on. We just can't wrap it over because the, this won't be there. So can't sew the papers in until we get them stamped and inked. And I can ink some of them actually once they're in. I just need to get the tops of them inked. 
at the spine where they would get sewn. music. It's all plugged in. I'm not even wearing it. Oh, that's a good song. <laughs> Upbeat song. It's what we needed. So bad you guys can't hear it. <laughs> I'm recording. I'm doing this for you. You just don't know it yet. So I'll be on all week, as usual, as per usual. Got a lot of chip dories. Oh. Okay. Front, back. Let's do the spine, and then we're also gonna do the inside coverings after we get the spine on and I'll have to show you as that too. It's all these steps. So I'm trying to decide if I want to do this green spine because there's green on the pink there. Or to do this more neutral. News print. I like the green. three, four and a half. Four and a half needs to be the width for if you're doing the exact measurement. If you have a two inch spine, one inch on either side that it needs to hang over, and then uh, quarter inch gussets. So four and a half by nine and three quarters because it wraps up over the top. I could grab the other one of this and use the newsprint on the inside though, that would be cute. I'm going to border punch this on both sides. So you started like this. Now if you want the same punches to line up, because it just drives me nuts when they don't, you just flip it and punch this side starting at the top. And then you will have the same punch marks parallel to each other all the way down. Okay, I'm going to ink it. I'm just using the fray bird off. She doesn't want it dark. She likes the vintage look. She likes it distressed, but she doesn't like it done in a dark way. So I feel like I'm doing everything I'm not usually doing. <laughs>
Yeah, it gives it a nice vintage, a very light vintage without being extreme. That's one of the reasons I like it. So put your tape at the top and bottom first. Because these are the top here and the bottom get wrapped over the top of the chipboard. You need that tape there, and then we'll put the side tape. I don't have one inch, so I'm going to have to do... We'll do one inch and quarter inch. I want to go for a massage. Heather's going for a massage today too. How super fun. I haven't had a massage in like 10 years. <laughs> Don't be sad. Um, well shoot, oh here it is, here we go. Okay, so that's about an inch on either side. And the reason I did it with the quarter and the eighth inch, because we have the in other eighth that we have to consider that is our punch dead that has no tape on it. So you gotta consider that too. Because you still need room for your two inch spine with a quarter inch on either side ish. Like that. So I'm just going to remove this tape right here, maybe. And I am going to take my ruler put it right up against the tape and hold it there. That way my page goes on straight, of course, and then you're placing between your top and bottom square tape, just like so. So this will be our front. Okay, you're going to do the same with the back. And then these edges and stuff will get inked. I just, I have to wait till I put the spine in to do that.
garnish it on. So basically what we're going to do is draw our lines and sew in our signatures. But at first I have to stamp on these pages. That so You need to do your stamping always before you put them in. They, you need a flat surface. And I'm going to have the ink in the crevices of it. I can ink the pages once they're sewn in just because they're tiered. So you, you do a pretty good job at just going like this and getting them. And just, you know. And she didn't want dark inking, so I don't have to go super crazy. But there are pages in here that are shorter than other ones, so. But right here is where this bottom and the corner crevices is what really needs to make sure you get ink before you sew them in. Oh, this needs a border punch. So you have to decide if you're more comfortable with inking them one by one or whatnot. It's literally going to be like 45 pages ish. So I'm going to take and ink as I need to. I'm going to set this all aside so we won't need this for um, a little bit. I'm also going to get my stamp block and my stamp ink which I think I'm going to use um, Dark Bark. Cream is Dark Bark, which is a nice brown. We'll see if I like it or not. Oh, Carrie is never going to live down those fleas. Now this is a chalk edger. You can easily ink with that as well. Yeah. I like inking with it because it doesn't bleed through, whereas the other ones bleed through. So do the chalk edgers when you're doing the thinner paper.
use my ink and stamp as I go. And then once I've used the stamp, I won't use it again. So literally the rest of this, our time together will be me inking and stamping. I don't think that I can ink all of this and get it sewn. Well, I'm only inking the pages that are shorter than the rest of the pages. Three signatures. So one, two, for one signature, this leave for one signature, and then I will just make a pile over here with the baby wipes, clean them off as I go. Perfect. I should just stand the back of this one. The other ones. I stamped on the back side of this paper because it'll actually be at the back of the book. So. Let's ink this. Nope. <laughs>
This is so out of the normal for me. It looks so light. I just want to grunge it up. Especially since this color does nothing. I mean, it, it does, but it's not my huge. It's not my huge. I honestly think when I was thinking of doing a junk journal, the one thing that I dread the most is the inking. Everything else I absolutely love. It's the inking I don't. So the rest of it is going to get inked, should be inked, because I pulled it out. So, and then I'll, um, this one I did not ink. Just going to kind of slightly, slightly roll it this way. Thank you. 
Alright. That one's decent enough. Ink enough for my dog pen. Especially since it's such a light ink. I'm sitting here trying to ink it darker, but it's a light ink, Ash. <laughs> Alright, so there's that one. What time is it? Oh geez, this recording is already at two hours. So let's grab the next one. Did I not stamp this one? I don't think I did. And I meant to. <laughs> I know I'm boring you guys half to death. But that's why you junk journal making, I suppose. Dropping like flies, I tell you. <laughs> All right, so there's that one. Once I sew them in, it goes really fast from there. Then it's really just embellishing. just not dry and or dark enough for my liking. Mark and I are deciding if we want to. We want to get Kramer a second cage. One for being outside in the summer that he can be outside in. We would just push his cage up against the other one and have him go in it so he doesn't fly out clearly. But I thought he might enjoy the outside in the summer. Let's do a little stamping. This will be our next pile.
This one says, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. I love that one. It's very pretty. Hi, Deborah. next stamp and I want to just stamp on the back side of this because that is in the back of the book so they get spread out to so leave the life you've imagined Oh, every time, oh, that almost earned a cuss word. Oh, my goodness. I just cut my toe open. Ow. It's a good thing I'm recording. <laughs> oh, ow, 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 ow. Oh, that hurts. <sighs> There's a basket underneath my desk. That's that's a dollar store basket. It's got the whole big one, and it holds my chipboard. And my toe got stuck through one of the holes in the plastic. Like cut it. <sighs> the struggle. Stamp on this one. I love stamping these birds on a wire just randomly throughout the book. It's one of my favorite things to do. This is random. Random birds on a wire. Okay, so that'll be the stamping for that signature and I'll go back and ink this later. I'm going to make you guys sit there and watch it. So let's do stamp our birds here.
grab our next set. She left beauty wherever she went on the back of this. We will stamp this. Crickets, I say, crickets. Pop my chat out. Let's see if that works. I was thinking I was going to start vlogging on YouTube, but you guys see so much of my everyday anyways because I'm on here all day long. I don't think I could vlog. I'd have to do like a weekly vlog and comprise it into one video every week, which I could totally do that. Little bits of my day. I love vlogging. I have so much vlogging material that I've already, and I just forget that I was vlogging that day. <laughs> horrible vlogger. All right, this says be fearlessly authentic. I like that one. Okay, so for the stamping, stamping is done for each one. She just wanted quotes stamped throughout, and those are all the quote stamps that I ha I own. So that would fit comfortably in here. So I'm going to ink this. So they'll, it'll, I feel like I almost want to grab another ink and do never seems dark enough for me but she didn't want it dark so I kind of need to respect that this is gonna be a really chunky one so it's gonna look essentially like that I still have to sew it onto the pieces and stuff and it's gonna have seam binding to keep it closed but it'll, I like how they go right out to the edge. But there's a lot of space in here for her to journal and whatnot. Well, so it'll look pretty once it's done. I'm going to do seam binding to close it. There'll be seam binding and tags throughout, but that's going to have to be in a different video. Because I'm going to stop this recording. Because all of this other ephemera over here still has to go in it. All this stuff on the phalanges and whatnot. So, and then I'm going to spray some of these doilies, just a nice taupey color probably, and put them throughout some of the pages as well. So. But I will record it. I don't know that I'll be live recording it. I'll just record it here 
I don't know, maybe, but Xandra's going to be on in like an hour or so, and I'm going to go take a break and put my feet up because I really, my toe is bleeding. I totally cut that open. So I'm going to stop the recording. This is a junk journal part one. Um, so let me stop.